Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry for not having been posting recently. Um, I actually just started work and um, I just started moving around due to COVID and I had to get everything prepared for work. So um, it's been really busy recently. So that's why I haven't been really posting, but I wanted to start um, posting more regularly now that I've got everything settled down. For those of you who are new, um, I'm Code Ray and I'm currently a software engineer at a fan company. And in this channel, I help you to navigate and succeed in your tech career. So let's get started. For today's video, I wanted to talk about how I got a software engineering internship at Lyft, um, the whole process, and so it can give you input into recruiting for um, upcoming software engineering internships. So for those of you who don't know what Lyft is, uh, Lyft is a ride sharing app that's mostly um, used in the United States um, and it was developed in 2012 and it's just basically like Uber. So when in the beginning, I actually um, didn't really know what Lyft was and I didn't know um, that a lot of these companies had their own software engineering internships because Lyft was relatively small when I applied at the time. They were a startup, um, not necessarily small, but they were still a startup and I didn't know that I could just apply because my basically my whole mindset was um, applying to these like top tech companies like Facebook and Google that were like a lot larger. And so what actually happened was that when I was actually recruiting uh, for internships, um, I was looking through a bunch of different websites and resources to find out what companies to apply for. And one of the resources that I used was CS Career Questions. It's actually a subreddit and it has a ton of different members. It has thousands, hundreds of thousands of members. Um, and basically on the subreddit, people go there to ask questions relating to CS. And there's a particular thread in which people actually post or people post anonymously their salaries for internships and new grads and potentially like full-time work. Um, and so I was specifically looking for the uh, threads for salaries of um, internships because I wanted to look for other companies that I could apply for. When I was uh, looking through these, one of the ones that I actually found was um, someone who actually got a software engineering internship at Lyft. And when I saw his offer, I was very surprised that Lyft like, or a startup paid so much because everyone um, had recently told me that you know top startups like um, the fan companies paid the most amount of money, had the best perks. And I saw that Lyft had you know such a good salary for their software engineering internships. And also, you know, like it was another company to apply for. So then I decided to apply for it. But before applying for it, I wanted to ask other people about their experiences, but I actually didn't really have that many friends that um, worked at Lyft or did software engineering internships at Lyft. So what I did was that I looked onto basically LinkedIn and I looked up my school or you can look up like just specifically the company name and software engineering internship. And so I found a few people who also worked in, um, in the past in the Lyft software engineering internship and they weren't from my school, but they were from people that I knew or had mutuals with or connections with on LinkedIn. And so I managed to contact them and ask them how they felt about the Lyft software engineering internship. And basically I always got amazing and positive responses. A lot of people really loved the company. They were super nice. I heard really good things about them, about their um, work culture and about their, um, I guess just social culture and work-life balance as well. And so after doing that research, um, after asking like some of the people who worked there like a lot of questions on what Lyft was, I started to um, basically start the application process um, for Lyft. The application process wasn't really that hard. I basically applied there on their website. And for what I use as my resume, I actually have a video about um, the resume that I used to got into Google. And I applied for the company. And after waiting a few days, I actually haven't heard back from the company. And that was totally normal because a lot of companies were really backlogged with a bunch of applications. And I decided to, basically one of the things that I noticed about all of these applications is that a lot of people just apply to the company online and they just sit there and just wait for the company to get back to them. A lot of times this would work, but for me, I really wanted to just take next steps into making sure that I could do as much as I could into getting myself into that interviewing process. And so one of the things that I wanted to get was I wanted to get a referral to the company because referrals are like some of the best ways in order to get yourself into the interviewing process. And in order to get referrals, you actually need someone to basically um, refer you, right? So essentially I was on LinkedIn again and I looked for a lot of people who did the software engineering internship in the past and I actually didn't find that many people um, and it was pretty hard to get a referral because 
um, essentially like a lot of these people who work at their internships couldn't refer any people anymore because they already finished their internships. And I was trying to find people who are currently working for Lyft, asking them how it went, um, just being very polite and just asking if possibly they could give me a referral because I knew that I would put um, my full effort into going through this interview process. And so essentially what happened was I found someone from my school who actually worked as a Lyft software engineering internship in the past. And talking with her about it, um, she was able to ask her recruiter if she could refer me over to her. Essentially, I started the uh, email process in which I basically sent out a cold email um, to her recruiter saying like, hey, this is um, Code Ray. And essentially like, um, I was referred over by this person and um, I'm pretty sure she also spoke with you already about me. And so I just being very nice and talking about like why I wanted to work for Lyft um, and also like just like really like the um, the culture and the work culture and everything and also I basically just sent a, the first email and lo and behold the next day I got an email back from the recruiter and basically she's willing to just ask for my resume and so she said send your resume over and I said sure okay I'll send my resume over and so I sent my resume over same resume I used to apply and I told her I replied online but I haven't heard back is that okay she's like it's totally fine so basically um, I essentially was able to get direct contact with the recruiter and that was extremely helpful because sending her my resume, I know that I can get directly into the interviewing process because she was a recruiter, um, but sending the resume online, it might be lost into the stack of the other resumes that people have applied to. And so basically she took my resume and then she said, um, your resume looks good. We're interested in having you um, basically go through the interview process. Okay, and essentially this started the interview process for me. I was really scared. I was basically not prepared at all. And I was really scared because I heard from a lot of people that startups are a lot harder to get than other tech companies because they look for specific things in people and they have a lot of harder interviews um, because they are startups and they're looking for like the best engineers. I'm not saying that top tech companies don't look for the best engineers, but they are willing to, but top tech companies are willing to hire more than startups. And so essentially when she said, okay, let's schedule a time to meet for our first interview. Um, I think a really good thing that you should do or anyone should do when they are in the interview process is always ask the recruiter, like, what does the interview consist of? Is it going to be behavioral? Is it going to be technical? How long is it going to be? And is there any resources that they could have to help them with the interview? So I asked this to my recruiter. She gave me a ton of good resources and she also told me exactly what the interview comprised of. And so in order to prepare for this interview, I basically scheduled it two weeks ahead um, so that I would have ample time to prepare for it. And in preparing for this interview, essentially what I did was look up a lot of information about Lyft. Um, I did a lot of um, mock interviews with my friends, specifically for the behaviorals. And for the technical part, I also did a lot of mock interviews um, and I used a lot of resources that I have linked in one of my videos. Um, but essentially what I did was I did a lot of algorithm questions, um, a lot of lead code questions, um, just to help me prepare and help me be more confident for the interviews. Cause a lot of times these problems, um, they, there might be a way to do them. Um, but if you go in very nervous and unconfident, it might be a lot harder for you, even though you know how to do them. So I think doing a lot of these questions helps you not only um, build the strategies, but also build confidence for these technical questions as well. After waiting two weeks, I popped in for the first interview. And for the first interview, I guess how I felt about it after was that I was a little bit scared because um, a lot of interviews, what happens is that instead of asking like one specific question, they would ask different variants on one specific question. And those are really hard because they really need you to basically really understand how to build on top of a uh, answer to make it better runtime or to make it um, more efficient. And so I worked a lot on that and I made sure to be as transparent as possible with talking about the question and talking about the answer and just always like asking questions to the interviewer if you don't know how to do something and always talking it out with the interviewer to make sure that he really understands like what you were thinking at the time. And so what happens is that um, after that interview about, you know, a few days to a few weeks later, the interviewer, the recruiter got back to me saying that they wanted me for another interview. And so I essentially did the same thing. Um, I scheduled it like one to two weeks in advance. This time I was a little bit more prepared because I was preparing a lot for that first interview. Um, and essentially what happened was they gave me another, um, they gave me some real resources and some more information about what the interview would be like. Um, and from that, I knew that it was gonna be a lot longer. 
And uh, then I was a little bit scared because, you know, it's a little bit hard to focus with like, you know, hours of law interview. And I was really bit scared because I didn't know if I could actually like take on like answering that many questions. So I basically worked on more endurance in which I did a lot of lead code questions one after the other instead of just one at a time. It was just like one right after the other to make sure that I could really talk the whole time. And I did interview mock interviews with people online and also people in person back to back just to make sure I can really handle like, you know, having more than one hour of interviews and having it be for a long time and also doing a lot of lead code, um, reading a lot of books, cracking the coding interview, elements of um, programming languages. So essentially what happened was that um, I went to interview you really confident, you know, but I was actually like not as confident throughout the interview because the interview was a lot different than other interviews in which they tested a lot more of your software engineering ability. And I wasn't really great at software engineering because I had only recently switched into software engineering. Um, or to switch into the computer science major at my school. And so I was a little bit scared, but um, I essentially did my best. Um, there was like more than one interview. There was a lot of people talking to me. Um, I managed to talk to a lot of people um, and there was a ton of technical and a ton of behavioral and I managed to do my best because beforehand I did a huge amount of behavioral mock interviews and also asked a bunch of like questions or basically wrote down a bunch of questions that I could ask to an interviewer. So I tried to talk as much as I could and just give out everything and in the end I basically was kind of scared afterwards. I didn't think I would get it um, but after a few weeks, the um, recruiter came back to me and I had got the interview and I was super happy and really excited. Um, but basically, here's my journey throughout the whole Lyft software engineering internship process. Um, I hope that helps you or like helps any of you to basically like go through like how to prepare for your tech internships. But if you guys have any questions, make sure to um, post your questions into the comments and also make sure to like, comment and subscribe because I'm gonna try to post more regularly and I'm also gonna try to you know, post more technical interview prep and behavioral prep on this channel. So uh, thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day.